Hi everybody. I'm making a video with the door open so people are gonna look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> Alright, in this video we're gonna be talking about section 2.4 zeros of polynomials. Remember polynomial oh the monkey. It's the monkey again. Let me try again. Okay. So zeros are pretty much where <clears throat> Oh no! <clears throat> I ate a pretzel and it got stuck in my throat. <laughs> Excuse me. Zeros are just wherever you cross your x-axis. They are also called x-intercepts, which are also called roots. Uh, uh, or solutions. There's the other word. So there's an x-intercept. In unison. There's an x-intercept. There's an x-intercept. Or zeros of polynomials. That's pretty much all we're going to be talking about today. Reference them referencing them in different certain ways. <laughs> kind of sort of made a rhyme. I did a rhyme! So we have this test for the possible rational zeros. Well, it's not really a test. It's just your rational zeros. Hang on. They're so loud. I hate you guys in the hallways. Learn some manners. Learn how to be quiet in the hallways. People are trying to do things. I know you want to talk to your friends, but talk quietly. Ugh. Make me sad. Okay. So to find possible rational zeros, remember rational is just like numbers like 1, 2, 3.5, 3.17, not pi. No, pi is not a rational number. It never ends. Okay. You are going to take the factors of the constant term and divide them by the factors of a leading term. Those are your only possible rational zeros that you can ever have for any certain polynomial. Okay, so let's see what that's talking about. All right, looking at this problem, again, make sure you guys pause it, write it down, and then we will do it together. And then if you're reviewing for this, make sure you pause it, try it, and then we'll do it together again. Nah, I'm going to say it the same way, no matter whether you're taking notes or I'm going to review it. So, ugh, stinks for you in your face. I'm going to say it the same no matter what. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. Don't ask. Okay, so just doing the possible rational zeros. It says list the possible rational zeros. So I'm going to do the factors of the constant. Remember, factors are just numbers that multiply to be the constant. Don't forget your constant is the last term. The numbers that multiply to be 6 are like 1. 2 and 3 and 6 over the numbers that multiply to be the leading term. So 1, 2 times 2, 1 times 4, right? They're just the numbers that multiply to be that term. So now you're just going to go individually. Uh, 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 pink. Pink. Yay. 1 divided by 1 is, uh, I'm not going to put equals, 1. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. 1 divided by 4 is 1 fourth. 2 divided by 1 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. I already have it. 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. I already have that. So I divided that. I divided that. And I'm going to divide the 3. 3 divided by 1. 3 divided by 2. 3 divided by 4. Oh, I'm going to run out of room. Magic. Ha, I made more room. Did the 3. And then I can do the 6. 6 divided by 1 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. I already have it. 6 divided by 4 is 3 halves. I already have that. Okay, so here are your possible rational zeros. And then don't forget, this has a plus or minus. So I'm going to put plus or minus on all of these. So these numbers are just what's possible. They are not your actual zeros. This one is only going to have a maximum of three zeros. They are just the ones that it could be. Okay, and then to determine which are real zeros, well... Handy dandy, we'll have a calculator for this one, but, no, not but, I'm just kidding, I don't know why I said but, hang on. Okay, when we graph this, that looks like it's about negative one half, which, hey oh, that's one of our options, negative one half. That looks like it might be about one third or one fourth, I'm not sure, so I'm going to calculate the zero so I can test that one. Uh, actually, yeah, it should be one fourth, because we don't have one third as an option. And then it looks like 6, so that one should work as well. So real quick, I'm just going to calculate the 0 on this one, left, right, should be 0.25. Oh, it's 0.5, good thing I checked it. So that way I will check 1 half. See that, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, yeah. So all I'm going to do to check these is just use synthetic. So I think I have negative 1 half, right pen. So I'll use synthetic, 4, negative 24, 1, negative 1. 6, so 4, negative 2, negative 26, 13, 12, negative 6, 0. Hey, -oh, 1 half is good. And if you do 1 half, sorry, negative 1 half is good, is what I meant to say. 
4, negative 24, negative 1, 6, same thing, 4, 2, negative 22, negative 11, negative 12, negative 6, 0, also works, so that one is good. And then the last one that we need to test is the 6. So 6, 4, negative 24, negative 1, 6, 4, bring it down, 4 times 6 is 24, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 6, 0, and hey oh, there we have them. We have all three of our zeros, they are checked, they are good to go, and I am happy. Yay! Alright, here we go. So in this one, listening possible rational zeros, again, I will do P over Q, where P is the factors of the constant terms. So this will be 1, 2, 4, 8, and factors of the leading term, which is that's just a 1, so that's just 1. So this one, I only have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, and plus or minus 8. So if there's anything outside of that, it is not a rational zero. So I'm looking at the graph. I have one of them at 1.32. So that's not one of my options. It's not a rational zero. It's still a real zero. It's really there. I mean, I see it. It's, it's, it's real life. But it's not a rational zero. And if you want to calculate the other one, there's your other one, negative 2.18. So that's not one of our options either. So there are no actual rational zeros. So we could say like no rational zeros. But there are real zeros there. I want you to understand that the real zeros, the ones that actually exist, that's probably just a square root of something, it would be like negative 2.19 like we saw, and what was the other one? You can rewind it and see, but I need to recalculate it because I'm not going to rewind it because I'm lazy. I'd rather just say gibberish until I find it 1.32. Well, those are your real zeros. Those are the ones that actually exist. So if it says find your real zeros, you still need to tell us that these are your real zeros. But there are no rational ones. None of these are actually any of your zeros. Cool. All right, looking at our next problem, solving the equation. So it's just like it's polynomial, but we already have it set to 0. We don't have it set to f of x or something like that. So with this one, the easiest way to do this, because I'm not very good at factoring this. I don't know. Whoa. It looks like they're wavy. Wavy fingers. It's like the bendy pencil thing. So if I look at the graph, it looks like it hits about negative 2 and about negative 1 and about 3. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just use synthetic to pull out that 3, divide it out. So I have 1, 2, negative 7, negative 20, negative 12. Do 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 Okay, so I come down with that. So I know x minus 3 is a factor. So that is one factor. Whoa, why'd you write 13? x minus 3, that's a factor. And now what I'm left with is x to the third, right, and x squared, and x, and then a constant term. Well, if I think that negative 1 is still in there, let's calculate it real quick. 0, left bound, negative 1.5, right bound, ah, 0.5. Do, do, do. Looks like it's negative 1. So negative 1 should be a factor of all this stuff. So I can go ahead and use synthetic again to divide out that negative 1. I'll pull down 1, negative 1, 4, negative 4, 4, negative 4, 0. Hey, oh. So now I'm left with x plus 1 is a factor. I have x squared plus 4x plus 4. And x plus 1 and x minus 3. All equals 0. Well, this looks like it's a perfect square term. And I can see that it bounces off at negative 2, so that means the multiplicity there has to be 2. So this must factor as x plus 2 squared, and then I have x plus 1, and I have x minus 3 equals 0. And don't forget it says solve the equation, so I need to come up with some solutions. So I'd have x equals negative 2, x equals negative 1, x equals 3. 
I will want to see work on this. Do not just plug it in your calculator and show me that you can find things in a calculator. Because what if you get it wrong? You get it all wrong. Show me some work and maybe you'll get some of the points if you mess up something small. I love you guys. I want to help you. Okay, and also I will be looking for work that you checked their zeros because sometimes calculators do something weird and it'll give you something like this and you guys will round that to negative one and tell me that negative one is solution. No, not the same thing. Okay, love you guys. Hang on. All right, same sort of example. Pause the video and here we go. So in this one, it's not equal to zero, it's equal to all that junk. So I'm just going to take everything and move it to the other side. So I'll have to subtract 6x cubed, I will have to subtract 21x squared, and I will have to add 48, such that I end up with x to the fourth minus 6x cubed uh, minus 21x squared plus 34x and plus 48 equals zero. Now let's plug this in our calculator. All right, so it looks like I have some pretty clean hits at negative 3, negative 1, 2, and 8. So really a matter of uh, words. How do you use them? Uh, it's just a matter of plugging these in using synthetic to prove that they are actually zeros. So it really doesn't matter which ones you do. If you choose ones that are different, you'll still come out with the same solution as long as you did your synthetic correctly and factored correctly. So I'm just going to choose negative 1 because it's really easy to multiply things by negative 1. So I have 1, negative 6, negative 21, 34, 48. So 1, negative 1, negative 7, 7, negative 14. How do I make that a 14? Ah, 14. It says 14, I'm sorry. 14, Dean. And then 14. And then... 48 and then negative 48 and then makes zero. Cool. So x plus 1 is a factor. And then I'm going to do synthetic again to test. Uh, let's do 2. It's easy to multiply things by 2. So 2, pull down the 1, 1, 2, negative 5, negative 10, negative 24, negative 48 makes zero. Hey, okay, so already both of these I will have to put in factors. So I have x minus 2, x plus 1, and then I'm left with down here x squared minus 5x minus 24 equals 0, which hopefully that factors. Oh, 8 and 3, there we go. That took a while. 1 minus 8, x plus 3. Duh, I looked at it in the calculator. It shouldn't take me that long. What's wrong with you, Mr. Pike? I don't know. I'm just so sad today. This reminds me of Eeyore. My dog sits down. She looks like Eeyore. I have another dog. Ah, you'll see her later. There would be your solutions. Yay! Okay, this one is just like one that you saw in 2.2. Write the polynomial function of least degree that has the given zeros. We're given zeros. We can know that we can put them in factor forms. The only thing that's different about this one is that we have an i. So when we have an i, remember that just means imaginary numbers. When we have imaginary numbers, they happen in conjugate pairs. Well, what are conjugate pairs? That's what conjugate pairs are. Oh, okay. So pretty much if you are given that we have an x is 2i, then also negative 2i. If you're given that negative 2i, then also 2i. Oh, I went too long, sorry. <laughs> Pretty much all you're going to be doing is changing the sign in front of the i, in front of the imaginary number. So if you have something like uh, 3 plus i, your conjugate pair to that is 3 minus i. Okay, just change the sign in front of the i. So with this one, if I know that <clears throat> Dang pretzels. If I know that 2i, then I also know that negative 2i is a factor. So when I multiply all these out, so I have a polynomial function, so function x minus 2, x plus 3, then I have x minus 2i and x plus 2i. And then it's just going to be a matter of multiplying all this out. Remember, only multiply two things at a time. So I have x squared plus x minus 6. And then when I multiply these out, don't forget that i squared is the same thing as negative 1, right? Because i is just the square root of negative 1, so i squared is just negative 1, right? Okay. So then if I multiply this out, I'll have x times x is x squared plus 2ix minus 2ix. 
minus 4i squared. If i squared is just negative 1, then this is really just negative 4 times negative 1. So this is the same thing as x squared plus x minus 6 times x squared. That makes 0, so plus 4. Cool. And then it's just a matter of multiplying these up. So x squared times x squared is actually the fourth. x squared times 4 is plus 4x squared. x times x squared is plus x cubed. Right, and then I'm just going to multiply all these out. See, I write a lot faster when I'm not talking when I write too. Okay, and then combine like terms, and you'll have f of x equals uh, 1x to the third. 4 and negative 6 make minus 2. 4 and nothing makes 4. I do believe that is correct. Do, 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 yeah, that would be it. See, even Mr. Pike checks his work, usually. <laughs> All right, doing the same sort of thing. Uh, write the polynomial function of least degree in standard form. The one in standard form, all that's talking about, I just forgot to write it on that one. That's standard form. That's all it is. Okay. So with the given zeros, so this must have come from x plus 2, the 4 must have come from x minus 4, and the 3 minus i must have come from x minus 3 plus i, and don't forget we also have 3 plus i, so that must have come from x minus 3 minus i. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two together and these two together. So this will come out as x squared minus 2x minus 8. This one will come out as x squared minus 3x uh, minus xi minus 3x plus 9 minus i squared. Do, 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 do. And then I'm going to multiply the i, so plus xi minus 3i. Uh, I missed my plus 3i. So 3. Yeah. I'm sorry. So I'm going to change. No, I won't. This term right here, this negative i squared, that's multiplying these two. So I multiplied that and that, and I missed this right here, negative 3 times negative i, should be the plus 3i. So I should get rid of all my i terms. Because then we have minus xi plus xi minus 3i plus 3i negative i squared is negative 1 so that'll be plus 1 so this will come out as x squared minus 2x minus 8 times x squared minus 6x uh, this will be plus 1 so plus 9 so plus 10 and then I can multiply that all together so going term by term, x to the fourth minus 6x cubed plus 10x squared minus 2x cubed plus 12x squared minus 20x and the negative 8 to everything, so minus 8x squared plus 48x minus 80. Okay, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 terms, which means I got to everything. Sorry that I was a little bit off the screen. So I multiplied 3 terms by 3 terms, which would give me 9 terms altogether. And then it's just a matter of combining like terms and saying that it is a function. So I have x to the 4th. I did that. Negative 6x minus 2, so that'll be negative 8x cubed plus 10, 22, 22 minus 8 is 14, so plus 14x squared. Got that, got that, and got that. Then I have minus 20x plus 48x, which is plus 28x, and then the minus 80. Woo! All right, we're getting close to the end. This is a long video. I'm sorry. So with this one, list all the zeros and write polynomials as a product of linear factors. Don't forget a linear function is just something like x plus 3 or something like that. So that's what it means by linear factors. So with this one, I went ahead and graphed my function. It looks like I have a 0 at 5, and I have a 0 at uh, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Negative seven. Is that right? Did I just count right? I don't know. Maybe negative four. Let's say negative six. There we go. Negative six. So five and negative six. So I'm going to go ahead and use synthetic to divide those out of my function. So here's synthetic. I'm going to pause it. I'm going to do real fast. Boom! Okay, there it is real fast. And then you can continue synthetic and take out the factor with the negative six. Boom! And there's that one. So this came from the linear factor x minus 5. This came from the factor x plus 6. So I have two of my linear factors already. Remember, if this was x to the fourth, then this was x cubed. So this is x squared. So I'm left with x squared plus 4. And if I try to find the zero of that factor, if I set it to zero, I'll have x squared equals negative 4. And if you take square root of both sides, you will have x equals plus or minus square root or Sorry, not square root, just 2i. Square root of negative 4 is 2. Square root of negative 1 is i. So these are two irrational zeros. And they're also non-real. So then for your linear factors, x minus 5, x plus 6, x minus 2i and x plus 2i. There we would go. You have your zeros here, you have your zeros here. All right, doing the next example. Again, read the instructions, make sure you pause the video, copy it down, try it, do whatever you can do to actually try the problems. The more you try, the more you do, and the more you do, the more you win, the more you win, the more you succeed, and the more you succeed, the more you eat bananas. Something like that. It works. Don't look at me like that. Okay, so with this one, using the given zero to find all zeros, well, we are, if we are given that two i's is zero, then also negative two i's is zero. I have my other zeros in here. There's only four possible. Well, I already have two of them, so that means there's two stuck in here, crap. Ooh, <laughs> trapped inside the box. Not, never mind. Don't say that. Okay, so what I can do, since I can't use synthetic with imaginary numbers, and yeah. That's just no fun. But what I can do is I can at least come up with something. If I take both of these and make an individual polynomial, this will come out as x squared uh, da, 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 plus 2ix minus 2ix minus 4i squared. This will make 0. i squared, don't forget, it's negative 1. Negative 4 times negative 1 is just 4, so I have x squared plus 4. So I know that both of those zeros are in the term x squared plus 4. Now if I take that x squared plus 4 and I divide my polynomial with that, it will look like that. So with this now, just doing, <laughs> just doing polynomial division. Remember, only look at your first term. Don't laugh. It's not nice. <laughs> I don't care. Laugh. It's fine. That's what it's meant for. So x squared times what gives us 2x to the fourth? Well, 2x squared. And then I'm going to multiply. So 2x to the fourth plus 8x squared. Make sure you line up the terms with the terms that they go with. And then subtract your line. Do, 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 do. Banana foam. That goes away. Negative x cubed. We got rolling man rolling carts. Squared. I didn't put out my recycling. I'm sorry. Okay, and then to get to the next term. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Have a good day. I'm so sorry. So I can multiply this by negative x, and then negative x times x squared is negative x cubed minus 4x. So hey, oh, when I change the signs, those signs or those terms will go away. Yay! So I have negative x squared plus 0x's minus 4 left, and Dan skis. I multiply by negative 1, so I get negative x squared, and so, 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 and I have a 0 remaining. So now what that means is my other zeros are stuck inside here. Psst, back at ya. So if this were factored, I have x squared plus 4 times 2x squared minus x minus 1. I got the zeros from there, so I can factor this and get the zeros from that guy. 
So that's how that factors. So your zeros take it says zero. Potato, 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 potato. Eat a banana and make it tomato. <laughs> so there would be our other two zeros. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So same sort of deal. If I'm given that 3i is a 0, then negative 3i is also a 0. <laughs> so again, since I cannot see synthetic with imaginary numbers, you have to put these in factors and multiply. So you'd have x plus 3i, x minus 3i. Take the time, multiply this out, but I promise you it will come out as x squared plus 9. And then you can divide this out of your, uh, what is that called? Function? Ha. And then the same thing. Do your synthetic division. Ah, oh, no synthetic division. Polynomial division. <laughs> so I have to multiply that by x. Let's do this in a different color. So that'll be x cubed plus 9x. Change all signs. That goes, that goes. x squared plus 0x plus 9. This will have to be plus 1. So that I have x squared minus 9 with a 0 remainder. So there's my last factor. Uh-oh. I didn't write the last one as linear factors. <laughs> but there's that one. So our last 0 I would cut from this one. So I'd have x equals negative 1. And x equals plus or minus 3i. There are your zeros. To write it as linear factors, we would say h of x equals x plus 3i, x minus 3i, and x plus 1. There's your linear factors. On the last one, sorry, there's your linear factors. You guys can pause the video though. So, 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 so. Okay, on the last one, your linear factors. I would go from kind of that point, so I'll just put this in linear. <laughs> I need colors! So your linear factors, you'd have f equal x plus 2i. Yeah, she figured it out. x minus 2i. <laughs> and then 2x plus 1. And x minus 1. There would be your linear factors. You what? I got that one right. Good! She got one right. I'm happy. Okay, there's all of our notes. Yay, we took so many notes. Yeah. Oh, and there's the monkey. It's too big. It's too big. It's too big. It's too big. Oh, zoom out. <laughs> monkey. Boop, boop.